With the death of the last wild Arabian oryx, it seemed that all hope had been lost. Had the legend really turned into a myth? There was one last hope. A tiny handful of oryx remained in captivity around the world. If there was enough genetic diversity within this world herd, then maybe, just maybe, the phoenix could rise again to its desert home. A highly successful captive breeding program followed. Ten years passed by. Then, in the 1980s, the first of the captive bred herds was sent back to Amman. To ensure success, several measures were put in place. An area the size of Belgium was set up as a protected sanctuary. An area so big, it was given UNESCO World Heritage status. Local education programs contributed further to the Oryx's rise, especially as the local oil companies cooperated fully with the conservation department. A small team of rangers was recruited from the local Harassis tribe, but as we shall see, protecting an area this size is no easy task. combination of measures in place, the wild population had reached over 400 by 1996. However, all of this was about to change. The Amani population has risen rapidly in the last 30 years. As it has done so, many nomadic Bedouin tribes have turned from pastoralism to agriculture. Irrigating crops requires the most important resource in any desert, water. As the settlements grew, so did the requirements for camels and goats. This led to increased competition between the oryx and camels, because both feed on similar types of vegetation. To make matters worse, some oil companies have been allowed deep into the sanctuary to drill for oil. A 90% reduction in the size of the sanctuary led to UNESCO withdrawing its World Heritage status. However, all of these factors pale into insignificance compared to the main reason for the recent decline in Arabian oryx numbers. The primary cause is not an Amani one. It comes from abroad in high-powered 4x4 vehicles with automatic weapons. They haven't come to kill the oryx, they've come to steal them. Private collectors are willing to pay large amounts of money to get an oryx by any means necessary. Small teams of poachers can often evade the border patrols. They then head straight for the oryx sanctuary. Once there, females and calves are often targeted because they offer a higher price in the illegal markets. Once an oryx has been chased down, it is tied up and placed in the back of a truck. It is then just a case of evading the rangers and the border patrols, who often have slower vehicles. With all these pressures, the wild population in Amman has now fallen to less than 50. The remaining 200 are kept inside a secure enclosure at Juluni, the HQ of the Oryx Sanctuary. The enclosure may be secure, but it's also very small. In fact, it can't accommodate any more Oryx, so the males and females have to be kept separately. The Arabian Oryx is once again at a crisis point. Extra funding and international support is desperately needed to stop the phoenix of the Amani Desert from returning to the fires it once escaped from.